Hey guys, I'm here with Edward Farrington and he runs our machine shop. He's the head machinist here at the Nug Smasher factory. And today he's gonna show us exactly how a Nug Smasher IQ plate is made from start to finish um, here in the factory. So um, without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to Eddie and he's gonna start from the beginning. How's it going? Uh, basically our material comes in as uh, large pieces of billet material sorts all, all of our materials, 6061, T6, uh, aircraft grade, aluminum, made in America. So it comes in at big, long blanks, and uh, we saw cut it on the bandsaw to the appropriate length for uh, whatever operation we're doing on the machine. And let's show them that operation, like, uh, so cutting it on the bandsaw. Yeah, so Derek's, Derek's uh, over here cutting the material right now. So the saw runs semi-automatic once we get it set to the parameters, uh, it basically just cuts to the pro, um, amount of material that we need. All right, so when it comes out of the bandsaw, we got a blank like this. Uh, we load four pieces of material in the machine. It's basically four steps to get a complete uh, product. So there's uh, four stations inside the machine. You're going to see that right now after we load this in there. So explain what is ha what's happening right now. So right now we're uh, putting that chamfer on the top edge of the plate right there. And that's the very face of the plate, right? The top of the plate. Yeah, that's the top of the face that you see um, from the front of the unit, basically. Uh, and the first setup is where the heaters and everything go in, correct? Yeah, so there's one nearest to us. It does all the heater holes correct with a thermal couple. Um, the one that it's at and right it's gonna now. it's going to do that now? It's going to do that next, yeah. Okay. So it faces it first, and then, then this faced one moves along to the next station. Is that what so happens? So basically what we do is whatever tool, we would, like that tool spot drills and also chamfer, so it does everything on every part. Every part. Right, so that we don't have to do more tool changes than we need to. Sure. Save time, so you know, it chamfers and spot drills all the holes and, and does all that. And then it'll call up, uh, we were doing a drill now, so now it should start drilling for the quarter 20 holes. Sure. So it's gonna drill that thing, and it's gonna come over to this one near stuff. It's gonna drill for the thermal couple. Um, and then we should be doing all drilling, and then it'll go with the taps. So these are the holes that actually uh, bolt the heat plates into the, the frame. Yeah, that's the bottom side of the face right And it's there. drilling them, and then it's gonna come down and tap them as well. Huh? Yeah. Okay. After it, it, after it drills a thermal couple hole yeah, in the heat. Yeah, that. I'm pretty sure uh, it's gonna drill all the holes first, so I think now we'll drill the M4 holes. Okay. Um, and then the heater hole, and all then right. it goes then it goes and taps everything. So now it's doing a tool change, and it's putting a smaller drill on it. Looks yeah. like right oh, actually, tap. I guess it is tapping now, my bad. I okay, so now it's actually holes. tapping, which is yeah. threading the actual holes so that the screw can go in the hole. It's a quarter 20 tap that we're using. And that same tap taps the thermal couple hole on the back of the heat plate. Oh, that's, that's a heater hole drill there. Now this is a quite a long drill, right? That's quite a long. Yeah. For a drill, that's that's a big hole. Yeah, right? it's pretty, pretty long. Pretty deep. And that, that has to be all the way that deep so that our heaters can be all the way in the middle of the plate to evenly heat it up. In these plates, there's 260 watt heaters that go in each plate. In total, in this unit, um, 
whether it be the XP, the Touch, or the IQ, there is uh, four 160 watt heaters total in each plate, or in total combined in both plates. So basically, you have uh, on this setup right here, it's the you're looking at the back of the plate, the back of the heat plate. On the one next to it, just to the left of it, you're looking at the top of the heat plate. And then the one uh, to the left of that, you're looking at the bottom of the heat plate. So now it's coming as dr drilling uh, four millimeter holes for uh, four millimeter taps that go in the back of that that hold the heat plate caps on the back and cover the thermal couple and heat plate up on the back of the heat plates. So how do these machines do this, Eddie? What, what makes them do this? Uh, well, we program them, it's basically, uh, it's off a coordinate system, so basically we program the X and Y coordinates for all the positions and tell it to turn, you know, whatever the spindle RPM we're using, the feed rate. There's a lot of different variables we put in there, but um, essentially you're just point to point. You're just telling the machine where to go and what to do at each location. So there's a lot of a lot of computer programming, if I hear what you're saying, and then there's yeah. a lot of knowledge behind the computer programming. You yeah. know what you can do so you don't break yeah. things, right? Exactly. <laughs> Start with the Start with a solid model, you know, in the CAD system. Then we take that and create a, a drawing for the shop so they know what dimensions to hold on everything and what our tolerances are. Um, and then we program it from that and load it in the machine and we have to verify everything works and um, fine tune everything. This thing's been running pretty smooth. This is, you know, obviously a production part, so. So now it's doing something to the front of the heat plate there. What is that? It's in, it? That's engraving a Nug Smasher logo on that plate. Okay, got it. That's doing the engraving on the front of the plate. So every cycle that we run here, we get a, a complete plate. So every time you know we run, it's basically an assembly line of machining here. It starts from step, the first stage, second stage, third stage, and then that's the fourth stage there. And we, when we're done, we have a done, done plate every time. So that plate's done then on the end. Correct. It's, it's been through Technic all the stages. Yeah, and even this one here. So since we only have one of the one of the pairs of plates is engraved, we basically engrave every every other one. So, sure. So basically, here Take we have those a done two plate. off and move the advance right. the two. Correct. Yeah. So uh, obviously the finishes are really important to us. So. You know, even though we can run faster on some things, we run their feed rates a little bit slower on some just to maintain that uh, appearance, the surface finish being smoother than is necessarily required for some other type of part. You know, it's important to us. So now we have a fan that comes in here and, and uh, blows off the uh, blows off the parts, kind of gets the chips and some of the coolant out of the way. That's dope. <laughs> That's legit. Does that help a lot? Yeah, it saves time, you know. That way they're not sitting there having to blow it off. And I mean, they how still many, have to blow it off a little bit. How many tool spots but... does that take? Does that only take one? Um, or does it actually, take like it, six? It only, it only <laughs> takes one, but because the blades go down when it stops spinning, okay. the blades collapse. So it only what actually takes up one station. But like That's the, the cool. face mill does take up two because it's a large tool. So we have to leave a space on each side of the tool for it, you know? So that's programmed into the tool changer. We can tell it where the large tools are so it knows not to put sure. a tool next to it. So guys, we'll, we'll see the finished product in just a second, but you can see the incredible investment that we make um, just to give our Nug Smasher customers a quality, quality part um, and a quality product. That's how we can guarantee them for life, and that's how we have a customer service team that's right here at our factory that can help anybody and everybody that's a customer seven days a week. Anyway, let's see the finished product, Eddie. This is pretty Made pretty USA. Cool. Made in the USA.
Guys, I hope you've enjoyed your time with uh, Edward and uh, and Derek and myself in, in learning how learning how the XP plates are actually built in the Nuts Master factory. Please join us next time for another episode of Design and Build. Like, subscribe, ring the fucking bell.